Kathy, what is the TARPON DNA study? Well, the TARPON DNA study is essentially a mark and recapture study. So rather than tagging and tracking an individual fish with a, tar with a dart tag or maybe a satellite tag, we're actually using the TARPON's unique DNA fingerprint as a way to tag and track that animal. And how do you get these DNA samples to find this fingerprint? Well, we rely 100% on the volunteer anglers throughout the state of Florida to help sample the tarpon's DNA when they catch the fish out recreational fishing for us. Why was this tarpon DNA study done? Well, the Florida fishery for tarpon actually is a multi-million dollar industry for the state's economy. So it's very important that that fishery remains strong and it's a catch and release only fishery in 2014. So one of the things that we have all focused, always focused our research on is whether or not the tarpon can actually handle the fishing pressure. Can you catch and release tarpon and have them survive? So we did a six year study and that showed us that survival rates are in fact high. Over 87% of the tarpon that were released after fighting it on hook and line made it. And then if you remove those fish that suffer the shark attack, the actual survival percentages increased to 95%. So only 5% may not make it just from the stress of fishing. So because we have such a popular fishery and you have high survival rates if the fish are handled carefully at the side of the boat prior to its release, we still have this intense fishing pressure. So the next question from a research point of view became, well then how often do the anglers catch the same tarpon? And so we started the tarpon genetic recapture study. Well, tell me about some of the recaptures. What have you found in the recapture portion of the study? Do we catch the same fish twice? Yes, people do catch the same fish twice. And the time in between those recaptures is as small as 24 hour window to as long as almost six years later, some of the same tarpon are being caught, DNA sampled, and released again. And when, when you find these recaptures, are they in the same place or has the tarpon traveled a distance? Both. So yeah, as, as we move forward with some of the analysis, we'll, so far we have 216 tarpon that have been identified as a recaptured fish. So that's a tarpon that's been caught and sampled more than once. And from that information, we're finding, so for example, the longest traveled tarpon was a fish that was caught the first time up off of the coast of Apalachicola, Florida, and it was recaptured more than 280 miles away and sampled again off of Captiva in southwest Florida. Whereas there's a number of other of our recaptures that are showing that the same fish is remaining in the same area despite the time that has elapsed between catch events. Has the same person ever caught the same fish on a recapture? There are a few instances where the same captain or the same recreational angler has caught and sampled the same fish again. What have you learned so far from this program? Well, one of the first things that we learned about this program is that tarpon anglers are some of the most enthusiastic and passionate fishermen on the water, and they're very eager to help with learning about the tarpon resource. So we consider this tarpon genetic recapture study a success story in a good citizen scientist project where the anglers themselves are the ones contributing the samples to what the scientists are going to use to finish the rest of the study. Without the anglers, without our partners at Moat Marine Laboratory and other fishing clubs and organizations that have really helped to promote this, we would not have a study. So we're, we are indebted to the anglers. Kathy, what will you do with all of this information that's been gathered so far? Well, what we'll do, 2014 is going to be the last year for actually collecting tarpon DNA samples within the state of Florida. So once all of the data is collected, the first and foremost thing we need to do is to proof our database to be sure that everything has been entered correctly and we have a nice solid set of numbers to work with. The next thing will be to finally start to summarize this recapture information and looking at the distance traveled, the number of days at large, whether or not the same fish are returning to the same areas year after year. Do they come back to the same spawning locations in consecutive years? 
are the juveniles in our nursery habitats growing up to become the adult fish in our recreational fishery. So we have a whole list of objectives and questions that we will now answer with these data. What's the future of this program? Well, I would say the future is twofold. But one of our long-term goals for the study was to try and find out whether or not the juvenile tarpon in Florida's nursery habitats will grow up to become the adult fish in Florida's recreational fishery. So what I'm hoping is that perhaps in six years or so, the juvenile fish that got sampled during our current study will have had time to mature, and maybe we will be able to reinstate this study to see if any of those fish get recaptured as adults, and thus answer that question that it may turn out Florida's fishery is supplied from juvenile fish right here in our state waters. Is that um, the, s the things they're doing down at uh, Lemon Bay, the Wildlife Conservancy and Lemon Bay studies with those baby fish down there, are you guys Will that be part of something you we, guys work with? Yeah, actually, um, that project, all of those samples, so the fish that were too small to get a pit tag for the wildflower project, they, they fin clipped those fish for our study, and we actually processed all of her genetic samples here in the lab for her. Mm -hmm. So all of that data is going back to Joellen and will be used to complete her master's thesis at the University of Florida. So, That'll be cool. Yeah, we worked, we worked with them. Yeah. We helped them out. Are there any more studies out there, or are there going to be any more studies? Yes, there actually is a new study that is sort of a spin-off from our tarpon genetic recapture study. Um, it's ongoing right now, and it is planning to be ongoing for the next two years, or possibly three. And basically, the anglers in Florida have done such a great job of giving us lots of information about the tarpon here in Florida. So now what we're doing is going to be a metapopulation analysis on tarpon from throughout its distributional range. So not just Florida, but we're talking about getting anglers from throughout the United States, throughout the Gulf and Caribbean, and perhaps even on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean so that we can start to evaluate the stock structure of the species at a level that has never been done before. And the project is funded. Uh, Dr. Liz Wallace is a postdoc here at FWRI who will be running those, those samples as they come back to the lab. Kathy, tell us some fun facts that came out of this study. I can say that the longest distance between two capture locations where a tarpon has been sampled is more than 280 miles. The longest time that has passed in between two captures has been six years. The shortest time has been probably 12 hours. Wow. The same fish was obviously very hungry and mm -hmm. feeding again. The, we have one tarpon that has actually been caught and genetically sampled three times, which was a juvenile fish over on the East Coast. We have one fish was off the central coast of Florida during spawning season doing what it was supposed to do. And then in the fall, it was sampled down at a popular tourist stop in the Keys where it's known for feeding tarpon. So that fish knew that when spawning season was over, it was time to go get a free and easy meal. So perhaps these fish are pretty smart. And the, the tarpon that had traveled the longest distance, do you know who any of the anglers were on that? Oh, not off the top of my head. Well, I do know, I do know that the second angler who caught the fish off Southwest Florida was actually your son. <laughs> And I was, gr I was thrilled to get the sample because he had emailed and said he had found the sample in his garage. It was two years old. Should he mail it in or is it, is it bad? Should he just throw mm -hmm. it away? And I said, no, please return it because we just need a very small amount of DNA for it to be an adequate sample. So he mailed it in and sure enough, to this day, it is our tarpon wow. that has the furthest distance between catch locations. Uh, tell me about this piebald tarpon that we've <laughs> seen pictures of. Yes, that fish was caught off Anna Maria earlier this summer. Um, Captain Clark Wright caught the fish and almost immediately images came to me and I got the what the heck is this? <laughs> and my first reaction of course was did you get a DNA sample? <laughs> and he did. So the piebald tarpon is it's it's not albinoism because the tarpon would be 
completely lacking pigment with red eyes if it were an albino. But when you have these sort of patches of pigmentation on the fish where it's black and orange and silver, that's what we call a piebald. You can see it in deer, you can see it in horses, so this is an example of a piebald tarpon. Do we know what causes that? I don't, I don't know actually what causes it. I do know that sightings of this type of a tarpon are becoming more common. I have had reports from anglers of seeing these tarpon since 2007. I got an image of one that was taken underwater in a school of fish in the Keys in 2008. And now this one was actually caught, which was the first time I've actually heard someone actually catching one and getting some pictures. So it was a pretty big deal, a pretty <laughs> rare find. I've heard of them through the years. I've never seen them. A couple of the old time captains that I know speak of them. And there is a, a lady here in St. Pete who has caught him, Debbie Crisp. Charlie's sister sure. caught a fish like that in the late 90s, early 2000s. So there we go. That so even predates the one that yeah. I knew of that was first reported to me back in like yeah. 2007.